Good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. We are back on the windowsill, and I've got another thrift haul for you. Everything that you see here on this counter is currently up for sale in the Old Curiosity Shop. If you see anything you're interested in, the link to my store is always in the description box right below the video. Now, I'm gonna tease you because I want you to watch through to the whole end of the video and so we're gonna have an old 78 at the end played on an old phonograph so I want you to stay tuned for that but I also want you to study this counter and I'm also going to tell you that something here has been altered okay let's test your your knowledge of vintage items and antiques everybody take a look when I say altered something is not in its original state it has been changed just a bit. Can you see it? Well, I'm going to tell you when we get to the end of this thing. All right, the windows are open. It's a cool, nah, in the 60s. It's not really that cool for this close to Halloween, not in this part of the country anyway. But I'm happy to have the windows open and some nice air coming in. And I want to thank you for joining me. Now let's back up here and take a look at what we've got. We're gonna hear this old record, as I said at the end of the video. Look at these adorable pups. I've gotta get down here. Look at those faces. Can you see that? <laughs> and what's even cuter than that is if we turn them around, look there. Oh my goodness. Now, sadly, there's only one. And boy, I'll tell you, I was Dora the Explorer in that Goodwill shop trying to see if I could find the other bookend alas alack couldn't find it and yes I know things get unpacked you can go back a week later and then you'll find the second one um, who knows unmarked but it is an old one it's going to date to right around 1930 the 20s 20s to the early 30s and it's just adorable yes there are folks who collect single bookends and so those little pups are up for sale I don't see a maker's mark on this one not sure which company made made it and you can do wonderful things even with just one single bookend so those are really sweet I hope it's coming up and I know there's not a whole lot of light here now um, I am horrible at finding sterling silver and I finally found a piece of sterling silver can you believe it's this antique grated cheese dispenser now this wonderful little cheese uh, grated cheese shaker was made by Frank M Whiting and the top and the bottom are both marked sterling they are original to the glass that center hole right there in that center hole was originally a decorative finial which I guess somebody got aggressive with their grated cheese and that finial uh, popped right off. But you can't really tell because it's the same size hole as all of the other holes. So big deal. I'm not going to tell anybody. And if it's Christmas time is coming up and you have got someone that's very difficult to buy for, you want to give something to the person who's got everything, I bet they don't have a sterling grated cheese shaker. There it is. Don't you just, I, I couldn't believe it when I found this in a thrift shop out just outside of Atlantic City about a week ago. Here's a wonderful mid-century piece uh, made by, uh, let's see, this is a Shawnee piece here and uh, it's clearly marked Shawnee on the bottom. They loved this little speckled effect. There's a number, but uh, it's hard to read. It kind of looks like 2102. I'm not really sure about that. I think it's eight inches tall. It is black and white with that kind of stippled effect. I like that. This little uh, sort of lotus leaf piece here is giving me, well, I'll, I'll take that back. <laughs> it was 59 cents when it was new. I've often heard people say those two raised uh, railroad tracks on the bottom mean means Royal Copley. And that's of course not accurate because there was more than one, there were more than one pottery company that had these raised 
marks on the bottom. And I just don't know. It's pink and gray, so it's kind of 1950s. So anyway, maybe a pottery expert knows who the maker is of that. These we talked about before, the little Lackawanna Railroad Dixie Cups. You know, if you are skipping some of my videos, you're miss missing out. You'll have to go back and dig about, oh, two weeks ago, we did a whole thing on Phoebe Snow uh, and the Lackawanna Railroad. Little Dixie Cups there. Here's the spice set over there. And of course, we're missing one because we've got... One, two, three, four, we've got, two. there are 11, so there would have been 12, and they, they, these also came on little metal uh, caddies, or shelves, actually. And sometimes the tops were uh, green, sometimes the tops were red, I've seen the tops in black, and of course in blue. And these are the ori original uh, labels on there, it's not, it's not any repaint or reprint or anything such as that. Very deco in style. Mm-hmm. Griffith's Spices. And we've got uh, a whole range of things here. We have, let's see, you can have cinnamon, uh, roast meat seasoning. That's got to be a hard one to find. Dry mustard, ground clove, paprika, allspice, ground nutmeg, epicure salt, poultry seasoning, black pepper, ground ginger. All right, we're missing one. You'll find it. All right, I'll just go ahead and tell you. Yes, you figured it out. Those have been altered. What are they missing? It's that siesta wear stuff in that frosted glass. We saw a lot of it in the 50s and 60s, and these originally had sort of a faux wood, leather grain uh, surround with a tiki design on it. I'll tell you what, I like them without it. Now, I'm not the one who took them off. I would never alter something. But even though they're missing that surround, which went right around the middle here, I like them this way. Siesta wear on the bottom. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty interesting in that condition. Here is a, boy, it's getting dark. It's going to rain again. My sunlight is going away. Here's a swung vase in emerald green. I'm sorry to pick it up like that. It has a ground bottom, a polished bottom. See there? Now, I don't see that on uh, Viking or uh, Ellie Smith, so I don't know who made this one. And as you know, I'm not, my, my expertise, well, I don't really have any expertise, but my knowledge drops off when we get into this 60s stuff. But I do like the emerald green. There's no cloudiness in that one. There is a little bit of cloudiness in that one back there. We'll get to that. Well, no doubt you've already guessed the item that I'm going to speak about the most is this wonderful old lamp. Let's just take a look at it from the top down. It is what's called a radio lamp. And these were marketed that way in the late 20s, mid 20s into the early 30s. You know, the radio, the big console floor model radio was a relatively new piece of furniture in the home. And many times in the evenings, folks would be just listening to programs and you didn't need a whole lot of light. And so just a tiny bit of ambient light was really all that was needed. Radio dials were lit, as you know. And so companies made lamps like this. They could be bizarre <laughs> in design and they can make absolutely no sense. But you were not supposed to read magazines by this. They would just sit on a radio and give you a little bit of general light in the area where the set was. Now we're gonna talk about it. She's unmarked. I don't know the maker. I have seen the work of this factory before because I recognize the shade. And what they would do is, this is cast iron. No cheap spelter here, thank goodness. But the figural piece here is just screwed on to the base. And of course, in the factory, they could put several different uh, figures on the base, so you would have different models of lamps. Now here we have, we're gonna zoom in on her closely. And the first thing a lot of folks are gonna say is, uh, what third grader repainted her? Well, she's never been repainted. That is the factory paint. They were crudely done, cold painted, and then shellac. We can even see where the shellac, the amber shellac, 
has kind of a honey color to it. Yep, that's the way they came out of the factory. No repainting on this. As I said, I have seen these before uh, with this sort of Moorish style shade in that almost military green paint. Now, the inside here might remind you of that sticky contact paper from the 70s that people put on their windows to make them look like stained glass. That's not the case. This is glass and it is painted glass. And with one hand, I'm going to try to pop the top off and let's see if it can be done. It can't, so let's come right back. All right, now I've got the top to where we can just pull this right off. And you can put any kind of light bulb in there you want. I've got sort of an orange colored Christmas light bulb in there, as you can see. And now we'll better get a closer look at this wonderful old shade. And you can see there's some old dust down on the inside. If I turn it this way, it gets some better light. You'll see these are glass, glass panels that are inserted into there. You can see the glass. One of those little metal tabs broke off and it's just being held in place with a little piece of scotch tape, which you do not see when the lamp, when the top of the lamp is in place. So not a big deal there does not affect the way that it looks at all when it's lit because that tape is below this decorative metal trim here. So it's painted glass, completely original. Let's um, put the top back on here. I'll just put it on this way. I won't press it firmly in place. Okay, there it is. And once again, dating to the 1920s. I don't know, I guess she's some kind of a classical figure. I guess she's carrying a horn on top of her head. Maybe it held oil or wine. And uh, it's really not supposed to necessarily represent anything. I really like the design and I hope you do too. It's hard to find these where they haven't been damaged or uh, repainted. And uh, I would not do anything to her at all. I would leave her exactly the way she is, even though she was very crudely painted in the factory. Some of you are going to find her hideous, and that's quite all right. I think it's fantastic. From the Art Deco era of the 1920s, an original radio lamp. Now, I did replace the electrical cord. Uh, and there's no on off switch on this. You can put an inline switch on it if you want. So you plug her in and she's lit or you unplug it or you put it on an outlet that has a light switch or again, you just change the cord. Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I love it. Oh, there's the noonday chime. Let's listen to it. Can you see the clock tower up there? I have the windows partially opened and uh, because I like, I'm, I'm happy to have this cool air coming in. Uh, so yeah, there's, you can see the construction is still going on out there. I guess 12 noon. I don't know if that's lunchtime or not. It doesn't look like it. Hey, it's lunchtime for me. I'm going to go have an egg salad sandwich and a nice little Waldorf salad and I'll be right back. But you can see I need to speed things up because it's raining and I've got some unmentionables on the line I've got to bring in. Let's get this thrift haul over with. The beautiful satin glass vase basket made by Tiffin, probably 30s, 40s. Boy, it's a beauty. And sorry it's late for your autumn decorating, but it's a pretty one. 
everybody uh, just loved this. Well, I don't know if everybody did, but a lot of people said, ooh, ooh, ooh. It's known as the Saturn teapot in cobalt blue. Yes, Hall made teapots in this wonderful blue, but this one is a Red Wing piece. Red Wing pottery made this, it's circa 1944. Um, not the 1960s. So Art Deco in style, Streamline really, American Streamline. And uh, it's in really good condition. There are one or two little pin uh, pricks. Well, let me show you. There's a tiny little chip on the underside of that lid that you can't really see. And there is, that is a glaze skip under there. I don't know how well you can see that. And that doesn't show up very well. Uh, that's not that easy to find. This came in many different colors. It is stunning in cobalt blue. Great mid-century design, or not really mid-century design. Streamlined, American Streamlined Art Deco style design in cobalt blue from 1944. The bookends, both sets, are made by what was the Philadelphia Manufacturing Company, and then at some point, I think in 1970, they moved down to Florida, and they were known as PM Craftsman at that point. We've got the six boys here playing tug of war, and the old man falling asleep. Boy, that looks like, if I, if I was alive in the 1890s, that would be me right there. Mm -hmm. Sitting in my Morris chair. Is that a Morris chair? Kind of looks like a Morris chair. And uh, boy, the detail. I'll well, get it focused. The detail on these things are, you can just sit here and study these. That is a fine mold made by an excellent company. And he looks as though he is in uh, 19th century clothing. I love it. Now the label has fallen off of this set. These are nice and heavy. They weigh close to nine pounds. And this set has its uh, label on it which we won't get into there's the elephant shaker the laundry shaker with his original top and he is in perfect condition I don't need to dampen my laundry today but this is how your grandmother and how your mother did it back in the 40s and 50s before steam irons yeah okay the laundry sprinkler we talked about that unmarked not sure who made it and that's a piece of Fenton back there beautiful piece of Fenton it is marked Fenton on the bottom, but you can hardly see it. It's not pressed in there very well. So you might just get a hint of the word Fenton under there. Quilted with these little ribs and the scrolled feet. That's a nice one. Look at the color of that too. You see that? I don't know, but if it's... Uh, not coming up very well. All right, I rambled on enough about that lamp. And then finally, a little swung glass vase in amber that's got the petals on the bottom and there's some cloudiness in there. You might be able to get that out. We've talked about how to attempt to get that out. Sometimes it comes out and sometimes it doesn't. So we won't ramble on about that. Did I cover everything? No, look at this little tiny basket three inches square. Now there's no uranium in it. It will not glow under a black light. But isn't that cute? That's just the right amount of jelly beans you need on Easter morning. Moderation. You don't need any more than just what will fit in there. And you can't fill it up more than once. That's cute. Don't know who made it. No mark on it. Tiny little basket. Okay, I think we did it all. Uh, Fenton... The show, blah, 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 blah. We did, okay, we did everything. Now, I am working on all these wonderful mantle lusters over here. They're gothic cut, and I have got, that's not, that's only half of them. I've got a ton more, but let's go play this old record, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, folks, don't tune me out yet, but I'm going to go ahead and say thanks for watching. It's always a blast spending time with you because you enjoy these old things as much as I do. Okay, let's go play a record and then wait for the cat. I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop saying, go get your clothes in off the line. If you live anywhere in the Philadelphia area, your, your unmentionables are getting wet. So long for now. Okay, as promised, let's wrap up this video with a sampling of a 12 inch Columbia disc recorded in June of 1917. 
1917, that's right. What was the popular genre of music at that time? Well, ragtime was still hanging in there, but 1917 is also the year that Dixieland Jazz comes to New York City and is recorded for the first time. But we're going to hear Prince's band, which... Mm, similar to Arthur Pryor's band, really a concert band, marching band, brass band, that kind of thing. Uh, the recording is called Yadi Da, recorded in June of 1917 in New York. See if you think you hear a little bit of ragtime in here. And the GIs will come home, the, the Doughboys will come home, and they will, they will not want to do any more waltzing. They're going to want to do some dances like this. Let's enjoy this old record. <laughs> <laughs> 